The JEE Advanced Physics exam has some great questions. Today we're going to look at paper 1, question 5 and 6 from the 2021 exam. It's on projectile motion. I'm going to try to solve it as much as possible without using the algebra and the equations, just with physical reasoning. Try the problem yourself before watching my solution. So pause the video, try the question, come back for the answer. So to start with, we know that we've got this projectile with a speed of 5 square root 2 directed at 45 degrees. And 45 degrees is a nice angle because the cosine of 45 degrees is the same as the sine of 45 degrees. And it'll equal 1 over square root 2. So what I'm going to need in the problem is these two components, the vertical and horizontal component, Vertical component will equal the hypotenuse times the sine of 45 degrees. Square root of twos will cancel out and we'll just get five meters per second. And because it is 45 degrees, these two components need to be equal. So let's now see if we can find out the time to reach max height. And it's going to be exactly the same time as if you fired a projectile straight up at five meters per second. The vertical velocity at any time is going to equal the vertical velocity that started with. And then, of course, it loses that 10 meters per second of speed every second. <clears throat> at the top, the vertical velocity has to be 0. So we get 0 is equal to 5 minus 10t. So t will be equal to 0 0.5 seconds. Now, at this point, you're probably going to say, ah, the time to go up was 0 0.05 seconds, and the time of one of the parts to fall straight down was 0 0.5 seconds. And if we think about that just for a second, if we imagine a particle, mass m, and it slows down, reaches the top of its path, and that takes 0 0.5 seconds. And let's say we made a video recording of that, and then we showed that recording in reverse. Then in reverse, it would just look like an object dropping. And of course, it would take exactly the same amount of time. Now, originally, we don't know if our part had a little bit of speed upwards or downwards. We know if it had any speed, it had to be vertical. But maybe it had a little bit of a speed upwards after the split, or maybe a little bit of speed downwards after the split. Now we know, because this took exactly the same amount of time. We know that it could not have had a little bit of speed upwards because it would have taken more time to reach the ground. It could not have had a little bit of speed downwards because it would have taken a little less time to reach. So the speed of that part that fell vertically has to originally be zero. Now that's important because it allows us to use conservation of momentum. So before the split, our mass was at maximum height and it had no vertical speed. It only had that original horizontal speed of 5 meters per second. After the split, you now have two parts, each of mass m over 2. But this one has no speed. And the other part, also mass m over 2, it has to carry all the momentum of the system. So whatever momentum we had here, it's got to be the same here. And because it's got half the mass, it has to have twice the speed, 10 meters per second. So 10 times m over 2 is equal to 5 times m. So now we know what that upper mass was doing after the split. So let's visually summarize what we've got so far. We had this mass m, it went up, reached a maximum height, and then it split in two. One mass went straight across with a speed of 10 meters per second. The other mass fell straight down, 
and it was at rest for an instant, zero speed. So this mass here, it was a horizontal projectile, and we're asked to find out how far did it go from the point O here, and we're also asked to find out how much time it took to go from the top to the bottom. This amount of time, that's very easy because all horizontal projectiles have the same time of flight and it's exactly the same amount of time as it takes to drop straight down. So because we know this part here took 0 0.5 seconds to fall through that height, this time for this part has to be exactly the same because it's a horizontal projectile. So there's one of our answers. We now need to find out this x here. I'm going to define these two quantities, x2 and x1. For x1, it is moving across at a constant speed, and that constant speed was 5 meters per second. And it does so for 0 0.5 seconds. The time of flight here is 0 0.5 seconds. It takes just as much time to go up as to go down. So for x1, it's moving across at 5 meters per second and moves across for 0 0.5 seconds. So it's going to move across by a distance of 2.5 meters. For x2 here, it's moving at a constant speed of 10 meters per second across and it moves across for 0 0.5 seconds. So it's going to move across by 5 meters. And that means x, which is just the sum of x1 and x2, has got to equal 2.5 plus 5 equals 7.5 meters. So x is equal to 7.5 meters, and t is equal to 0 0.5 seconds. So please take the time to like videos, to make comments, to ask questions, become a subscriber, sign up for notifications, become a member or a Patreon. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.